Okay, so in this problem, we're told a 75 kilogram adult sits at one end of the nine meter long board. His 25 kilogram child sits on the other end. A, where should the pivot be placed so that the board is balanced, ignoring the board's mass? B, find the pivot point if the board is uniform and has a mass of 15 kilograms. So the hardest part about this problem is drawing what's going on and labeling different distances. So that's what we're gonna talk about first. So we know we have adult on one side with a mass of 75 kilograms and his child is going to be on this side with 25 kilograms. Uh, they're telling us the total length of the board is 9 meters. So I labeled that with the distance L. Uh, and then we also have on here the pivot point. So this pivot point is where it's going to rotate about, right, uh, theoretically. And so this pivot point, I'm going to denote with a distance X from the adult. And then the distance from the child, if we were to label that, it would be L minus X, which would give us this distance right here, since this is L and this is X. And so keep in mind, we know that uh, we know that the pivot point has to be closer to the adult. The reason that is, is because the torque is gonna be equal to the force times the distance. And since this mass of the adult is gonna create a greater force, the distance to it is gonna have to be less in order to equal this one, since it has a lower uh, force. So hopefully that makes sense. So we know intuitively it's going to be closer to the adult. And then in part B or part A, we're not really dealing with the center of gravity because we're ignoring the board's mass, but in part B we will. And so the distance from the uh, pivot point, which we don't really know where it is yet, but we're saying it's there, relative to the CG, we know it's going to be equal to uh, half of the length minus X, right? the distance between the two. Right, because the CG is just going to be at the center of the board, right? which is L over 2. So this distance right here is L over 2, okay? And then if we subtract this X, that's going to give us this distance right here, or the distance between our pivot point and the center of gravity. So now that we have all this labeled, uh, let's talk about how we're going to solve each of these. So the way we're going to do it is by summing the torque. So we know that the sum of the torque in each of these problems are going to be, have to be equal to 0. The reason it's equal to zero is because we're trying to find the place at the or the point where the pivot point should be such that it doesn't rotate, right? Such that it's balanced. And if it's balanced, not rotating, uh, we know that the sum of the torque on it has to be equal to zero because if it wasn't, it would be. So we know the sum of the torque equals zero. And then when I say sum of the torque, I'm basically just talking about all the different uh, torques due to these forces being added up. So what are these different forces? So in A, we only have two forces acting on it, right? It's going to be MAG, which is the force due to gravity of our adult. And then we also have MCG, which is the mass of the child, uh, right? The gravity or the force due to gravity of that. We can ignore the mass of the board for the first one. So we don't actually have to take into account uh, this force, right? We call it mass of the board times G, right? The force due to gravity of the board. We can ignore that in the first one uh, so, since they tell us to. So all we really are looking at is these two torques. So uh, what are the torques here? So we can call it the torque due to the adult. And uh, another thing, when you add up the torques, you have to take into account direction. So let me explain this now. So uh, if this is our pivot point, right, we're going to rotate about here. This force right here would cause it to go down and rotate like this. This direction is clockwise, right, and a clock. If something, ro if a force causes it to rotate clockwise, then when we plug it into this equation here, it is positive. And now if you look at this force, it'll go down like this and then rotate like this, right? About, about this point here. And so that one's going counterclockwise. So when we sum up the torque, we choose uh, that one to be negative. So we know zero equals TA minus TB, okay? Or TC, we'll call it torque due to the child. And so what we want to do now is solve for the torque of our adult and torque of the child. And that's going to allow us to solve for uh, our distance x, right? Because they're trying for, we're trying to find where the pivot should be placed. So basically what we're going to be solving for is this x here, okay? And so I know the torque due to the adult, the formula for torque is force times distance times the sine of theta, okay? So if we look at the, the adult, the, what is the force that they're going to be applying on this? Well, it's the force due to gravity. So it's going to be ma times g. Now, what is their distance away from the pivot point? That's what d is. Well, we assume the pivot point was right here. 
and we labeled the distance away from it with an X. So we can write that there. Now the sine of what is theta? So theta is the angle between the lever arm and where the force is being applied. So notice the force is being pointed down, and then this right here is your lever arm. So what is the angle between these two? Well, it's going to be 90 degrees. Right, you can see that right there. So we know theta is equal to 90. The sine of 90 is just 1, so we can actually ignore it. So that just goes away. So the torque due to the adult is this right here, magx. Next, we're going to solve the torque due to the child. Once again, the force is gravity, so mcg. Now, what is their distance away from the pivot point? It's going to be equal to the total length minus x, right? It's this distance right here. So we have L minus x. Uh, and what you should notice here is that uh, the sine, once again, sine of theta, it's going to be 90 degrees again, since it will form a 90 degree angle. Uh, so we can ignore it. So what we have here is 0 equals magx minus mcg L minus x. So uh, what we can say is, or I think the easiest way to do this is by factoring. So what we're actually going to do is factor here. So uh, notice the g's can cancel, or let me move this to the other side first. mcg L minus x equals magx. So all I did was move this to the other side. Notice the g's are going to cancel here. Uh, and then we just have mcl minus mcx equals max. And what we're trying to do is solve for this x here. So we're going to have mcl. If I move this to the other side, I get max plus mcx. Uh, and then I would just divide, or I would factor out the x. So all I did was factor out the x here, and then just divide by it. So our x value is going to be equal to the length multiplied by the mass of the child plus mass of the adult plus the mass of the child. So hopefully you understand I just did basic algebra in order to get it here. We know the length is 9 meters. We know the mass of the child is 25 kilograms divided by the mass of the adult, which is 75 plus 25, right, for the child. So 25 divided by 75 plus 25, that's 25 over 100, which is 1 over 4. So we have 9 times 1 over 4, 9 times 1 over 4, or 9 divided by 4, sorry, is going to be 2.25 meters. So 2.25 meters, that's going to go ahead and be the distance away from the adult, right, because that's what x equaled. X was the distance away from the adult, such that this thing, the torque is equal to zero, so it's balanced. So this is your answer to A. So 2.25 meters, that's going to be your answer to A. And keep in mind, this is 2.25 meters from the adult. Right? You should just understand that since X is our distance away from the adult to the pivot point. And uh, yeah, so that's your answer to A. Now let's move on to B. So B is going to be a similar idea except for the only thing that's going to change now is we have to include this uh, force due to gravity, right? Because now our board is going to have some mass, right, which is 15 kilograms. So keep in mind MB equals 15 kg, where MB is the mass of the board. All right, we know it's going to be at the center here uh, because, uh, right, it's going to be the center of gravity, which is in the middle of the board. And so now we're just going to do the same exact thing, except for include this. So once again, the sum of the torque equals zero. Okay. Uh, and then if we say zero equals, we still have the torque due to A minus the torque due to C. But now let's figure out what direction this one is going to point. So we know it's to the left of the pivot point because we know it has to be closer to the adult, right? And I explained that earlier, because this force is greater, it has to be closer to the, to the adult. And then uh, we know that uh, it's going to go like this, right? It's going to go downwards and rotate this way about it, which is counterclockwise. So we also have to minus the torque due to the board, right? Negative because it's counterclockwise. 
So now I'm going to solve for the torque of the board. We know its force, which in this case is the force due to gravity, mbg, multiplied by the distance, which we found was L over 2 minus x, uh, multiplied by the sine of theta. Once again, theta is the angle between the lever arm and the force, which is just 90 degrees. So sine of 90 is just 1. Therefore, we can just ignore it. And so now we have all of them, right? Because for these ones, they're the same as in the last problem. So we're going to have MAGX minus MCGL minus X minus MBG. MBG. Sorry, my pen died real quick. MBG L over 2 minus X. And so now we have it like this. And what we're trying to do again is solve, right? Find the pivot point. Right, once again, we're finding the pivot point and we're going to be finding it from the adult again. So we're still solving for our x value, but we just have a couple more things here. So in order to solve for the x, I know what I'm going to have to do is first, what I'm going to do is move these two terms to the other side. So I'm going to have mbg l over 2, let me write it a bit nicer, minus x. And then I'm adding the other term, so plus mcg l minus x. And that's going to be equal to MAGX. So all I did was move it to the other side. So there we go. And what I'm going to do now is uh, multiply the terms out. So we're going to have MBG multiplied by L over 2. So uh, I'll just do it. I'll divide this by 2 and then just write L by itself. So multiplied by L. Uh, and then we have minus X. Actually, I'm just going to leave them together. Sorry about that. So this is mbg l over 2 minus x mbg. Or actually, the first thing, sorry about that. I'm getting a little confused. The first thing we're going to do actually is get rid of g. This makes it a lot easier just to solve since we don't have to deal with that. So we have mb, then I'm going to multiply by l over 2 minus mbx plus mcl minus mcx equals m a x so we need to get the x's by itself so let's say this equals zero again uh and then what we're gonna do sorry this isn't minus i messed up here this is m a x right because the equal sign is there so what we're gonna do now is move uh this to the other side and this so we have m b l over two plus we're moving this to the other side and this so we still have m c l equals m b or we have m a x plus m b x plus m c x and so now what we can do is uh right we can factor out this m a right each of the masses or sorry we're going to factor out the x from each of these i always get that wrong order so we basically have x times m a plus m b plus m c right so all i did was factor out the x from each of these terms and then you would just divide by each of these uh, in order to get it by itself. So this is our formula here. Uh, what we want to do now is just plug in the value. So we have the mass of the board, which was 15, times the length, which is 9 meters, divided by 2, plus the mass of the child, which is 25 kilograms, times the length of the board, which is 9. And then we add up all their weights. So uh, the mass of the adult was 75 plus the mass of the board, which was 15, plus the mass of the child, which was uh, 25 kilograms. So now it's just a matter of plugging this stuff in. So 15 times 9 divided by 2 plus 25 times 9. We're dividing this by 75 plus 15 plus 25. And yeah, so when you do this, you're going to get x equals 2.54. Uh, and then obviously... 5, 4, 3. So I'm just going to round it to 2.54. Since we're dealing with distance here, it's going to be in meters. Uh, so x is going to be equal to 2.54 meters here. So keep in mind uh, the answer for this, if we're assuming they're asking us to find it from the adult still, uh, right? Or you could just say 2.54 meters from the adult, 
right? Since they didn't specify where they want it located, but we're just specifying here to make it a little easier, uh, right? So your teacher can understand. Uh, but yeah, so X here, it's actually before it was a little bit closer, right? It was 2.25 and now it's 2.54. So by adding this uh, mass of the board, we had to shift it to the left a bit more, right? Because we had to make this number bigger uh, to make up for this one. Uh, but yeah, so uh, your answers here are going to be 2.54 meters from the adult and then 2.25 meters uh, from the adult. Uh, but yeah, so just a quick summary of what we did. Really, the hard part about this problem is labeling the distances here for when you actually solve it. But all we did was sum up the torque, uh, assuming there was no center of gravity or no, no mass for the board, right, which is easier than this one. Uh, and then it's really just a matter of finding the torques and solving it right plugging the stuff in and then for this one we had to assume the center of gravity was there so we also had to include right the torque due to the board uh but yeah so the hard part is just picking these distances right knowing that this is going to be l minus x this is x and then this is l over 2 minus x but the more you do of these you'll get better at it so uh yeah so 2.25 meters for a uh, and then 2.54 meters for b each of these are from the adult and uh yeah so those are going to be your answers and hopefully you found this video useful.